Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of D-Ray's Garage where today we are finally getting a look at the Golf R and starting to make some modifications. If I haven't posted already, I will. I'll kind of do a walk around of what is on the car already and then what we're putting on the car. Today's effort is largely based around tightening up the chassis, all that movement beneath the car that is designed to make it more comfortable. We're gonna take it out at the risk and probably at the expense of some uh, popularly termed NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. Uh, however, juice squeeze, like anything in the modifying equation of cars, uh, I expect to come out feeling a little better off, a little tighter chassis, tighter turn-in, in addition to a better uh, acceleration. One of the things I've noticed in a couple of launches I've done and wheel hop that occurs based on how loose the chassis is beneath when it connects to the transmission engine and the rear subframe there. So uh, what I've done here is uh, I, re I reached out to Nick over at 034 Motorsport and uh, they've uh, kindly helped me navigate through what the appropriate gear on their shelf would be to take care of that. So like I said today largely chassis related, and then on the next video, I expect you'll see the lowering springs and rear sway bar go in, which were additional recommendations. A uh, very popular mod and first mod for many on these MQB chassis vehicles is the dog bone insert, and um, I'm gonna post two, um, two links to 034 Motorsports videos about really what the effect and what the benefit is of these mods. So these are the rear subframe mounts. And so I think it's really difficult for me to demonstrate to you what the difference will be pre and post, but they have two one minute videos that will get you there very quickly. And I think that helps, and it certainly helped me understand what I was going to get out of these modifications, which are largely inexpensive in the grand scheme, but at the same time, uh, you know, you wanna make sure you're spending your money wisely. Uh, one thing you might wanna be mindful of is whether or not you have a socket that will fit through both the insert and still get to the uh, bolt head itself once it's through here. I've seen uh, people struggle with uh, having a socket that was a little bit too thick. So make sure you have that. As far as tools go for today, you're gonna need uh, some kind of torquing device. I have my actual legit torque wrench. I have my nice uh, little attachment that I put on. I will post the various specs as we go through. I do have a breaker bar to remove these bolts. I don't, I didn't get a new set of bolts for the rear subframe mount, so I'll have to put those in more tightly. So I think it adds about 20 Newton meters. Um, it is recommended to use new hardware, which I do have up here for the front, but not for the rear. These uh, torque, to, torque to yield bolts, they do prefer single use, although I'm sure they'll go just fine for my application. Uh, you'll need some blue thread locker, probably some safety gloves, even if they're thin and then the sockets, 21 and a 13. I think for the rear subs, it might be 16 millimeters. And like I said, I'll post all the specs as we're going through. So as you can see, hopefully, we're back by the exhaust setup. Yours may look different. This is an aftermarket Miltec, but uh, here's the very rear subframe mount. And then in front there of the, one of the control arms is the other, and we'll show you the front ones. There is a slight difference between the two in terms of the new inserts. One goes deeper than the other, and I'll identify those to you as we get these out. These are good long bolts, that's for sure. So this is the what we're replacing, this piece here. So you're gonna need some kind of prying tool. Let's see if I can do it with this small one first. Well, you just gotta get the man tools for the man jobs. Here are the two units. They look exactly identical from the front, except one is denominated 0030, the other one 0. 031. The 034 logo needs to face the front of the vehicle, so when it gets inserted, it will go like this, and they all four will do so. I just gotta figure out, well, that one doesn't seem to fit at all. So these shallower ones, the 
0031, the ones that go in the rear. And this one actually, you know, you at least press it with your hand so far. I will insert new Loctite and uh, we'll get to reinstalling here. So hopefully I didn't go too tight there with this guy. This Milwaukee Fuel can go to, I want to say it's 55 foot pounds. And I wasn't exactly hammering on it there. But I'm pretty sure these go down to about 37 plus 180. But let me put it up on the screen because I need to look it up myself. And I should have done it already, my bad. So as you can see, that was a pretty straightforward. Certainly the most complex part has seemed to be uh, just making sure you get an angle to get these old guys out. But you can see by comparison, let's see, where's the three, one. I mean, the thickness of these guys is clearly different and therefore you are removing a lot more of that movement in the rear end of this particular vehicle. So in the highly likely event that my arms, my hairy arms no less, get in your way during the front part of this exercise, I wanted to kind of give you a brief overview of what we're dealing with. So as you can hopefully make out here, and my arms are kind of blocked, pointed out. Let me see if I can do this. There's the one, two, and three bolts. We will be removing these two, I believe are 16s. This one does look bigger than that, so we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. This is the longer of the two, this is the shorter of the two in the kit that all comes with new hardware. This is a 21 millimeter, and as you can see here, I have, I think it's the version two, I'll correct myself if not, on the, uh, whatever that doohickey's called there with the bearing. And then you can see here where the dog mount, dog bone mount goes right through here and through the frame and connects up in here. The other piece is there's a gapper um, that will go in and fill this gap here. Hopefully you can see that. So there's a gap that sits in front here. So in addition to putting in the dog bone mount piece here and then this spherical billet unit, we'll be putting another piece up in front here. We may have to pry at this bearing to get it in there and lube it up so it goes in nicely. Then we will push the new unit back through put the new um, overarching mount in and then torque this all down. Now, 21, 16, 16. So let's get, uh, let's get this off. Oopsie. And see how much movement we get. There is a chance that when we take these off, there'll be some movement. So we, we may have to, in order to line up, the new bolts have to do some finagling, but uh, I've got a pry tool and such to accomplish that. is tight so I'm feeling like we're gonna see some engine movement here I'll try and do it in slow-mo for you but there was definitely some uh, some movement here just maybe a, uh, I don't know two or three millimeters where the engine just kind of nudged forward so as you can see it's sitting on the engine mounts up top so I'm not too worried about it coming down but that's the play, and frankly, that's some of the play we're trying to take out of this. Ugh. Probably should have done this one first. You see how much play there is in that? I hope I don't uh, knock her up this rubber. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay. Well, I think we're okay. But, uh, word to the wise, I would do this one before you do these, so you have that kind of uh, support from up here when you're cracking this bad boy. So, in theory, this should just jiggle out like so. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? So this is the part where we car guys think we all know better, so I'll be no different. Um, hopefully you can see up there, there's a gap. And in that gap, I'm gonna show you a little unit that I'm gonna try and slide up here. Now, the instructions clearly say that we should be removing some of these small eight mil bolts here, let the frame drop a little bit, move the sway bar back and put it in from the top. So, if all goes terribly, that's what I'm gonna do. However, I'm probably gonna get this stuck going in from the underside and feel like a real dumbo. So here's the unit that goes in here. I do have a uh, good size, not horribly sized, but a good size screwdriver to help pry this back. And then I'm gonna try, create enough room to slip this up in there. So let's see what happens. And you're probably gonna see a lot of hands in this deal. But such is life. to appear over here. It's starting to appear. So can we get this cleared enough to get the fat part? Oh, look at that. So, yes, I think I put it upside down. <laughs> like a boss. All right, well, let's go and get you in there. So you can see what I've done is I've got it lodged where the opening isn't quite as much what it needs to be. So. I need to maneuver that up some more. Again, like I said, the smart money comes in from the top side of there, but uh, I took a weird shortcut. May have turned out to be a dead end, but I'm gonna fight it a little bit longer. Now, that was a very scary sound. But my belief is, it paid off. Here's the piece going in. I assume the grease goes on because we're going into some of that uh, rubber that may be a little dry and a little tricky to navigate into. That's moving. That might have been it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to push heavy stuff on wheels, and then we're gonna have to move this around to tease it to line up here, which let's see if we can get that screwdriver. This is where we're trying to line up. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna to have to move you just so I can get better access. And what I'm gonna do as well, I think, is since I can loosely secure these front bolts, I'm going to do that. There we go. 
So the new hardware did in fact come with the locking washers. So you don't have to concern yourselves with that. Let's get a 16 still. Yep. Again, don't uh, don't go gorilla tight on these, but that should give us the lock we need to get the the other end here all lined up, and then we'll put the dug ball mount in. Man, I know that's loud for you, and I can turn it down in post, but that is a game changer for anyone that monkeys with cars. Okay. Now let's get back here. Let's see if we can get this all squared away. That's why is my bolt. So this one, remember, is the 21 mil. We will also be inserting, please tell me I bought the right one. Yep, this fella. You know what, since he's gonna seemingly stay in there and watch I'll drop on my face when I start maneuvering it, but I want that in there for two reasons. One, because it seems to be sticking, and two, I would uh, not be thrilled if I forgot. So, all right, let's line this guy up. Get on with our day. Not quite. the hole. Let's see if we can get a bolt up in there. Is it grabbing? If it's not, it's weird. Just give it a wiggle and see what happens. Oh, look at that. What's the song say? Wiggle it just a little bit. Two in a room. 130 newton meters plus 90 degrees. 50 newton meters plus 90 degrees. She is as snug as a bug in a rug. And that's the front chassis, allegedly, all firmed up. Let's give it a whirl. Let's see what we get out of these mounts. A little bit of a firmer shake there in startup. Turn the air up. Away we go. It's immediately a greater directness. I think that's how I would describe it and the, the way the car accelerates. So off the line acceleration, there was this, again, always at the risk of placebo, but this kind of slip, if you will, where it felt like the looseness of the chassis caused a slight delay in uh, you pushing the pedal and the car moving. That has disappeared. right in front of me. I wonder if he's going to try and be right behind me here. Dang it. Every time I come out to this road. Alright, we're going to give it a whirl. And 60. Significantly less wheel hop. But on a road like this this morning, a little bit more anxiety than I was planning on. Anyway, net net, the launch test was successful. For those of you seeking to uh, reduce wheel hop, almost eliminate. There was a slight hesitation and slip, but not the you know four or five bumps and humps that I've had in previous launches. So I would certainly argue that we have made the improvement there. 
I'm sure the lowering springs and the firmer rear sway bar that will be installed shortly will also have an influence on that. So, thanks for checking in. I appreciate you indulging me in my auto obsession and hopefully I am uh, fueling the fires of yours. And be memorable, be well, and we'll see you around soon on D-Ray's Garage. Bye now. Or uh, in the engine mouse, or in your butt, or wherever. As far as, t far as two, <laughs> take two. Watching a heartbreak. Do, 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 do.